Welcome back everyone. Today's video is a fanfiction called Devil's Glory by the author at 180 underscore Kreisel link to author's profile will be in the description. Here is the proof I had gotten permission. Alright as always the links are in the description so make sure to check out the other stories. The next day, Issei seems to be more wary than before. His gut is telling him that something is up again. What's wrong Issei Senpei? You look like you don't enjoy what you're reading. Kaneko asked, no, I'm fine. It's just that we have a test tomorrow, he half lied. Don't you enjoy reading, Issei-kun? Kiba joined in, well. I heard you're smarter than you let on but they may be wrong though, the blonde teased. That's ridiculous, I don't look stupid, where did you even hear that, Kiba? I heard it from a group of girls I passed by talking about you. Really, there are girls that, admires, Issei Senpei. You're so mean, Kaneko-san. H.N. Kiba laughed at Kaneko's response and Issei's devastated face. Era, Era isn't it getting a bit lively here. Their third year senpei said as she comes inside the club room. Ah Akino, welcome back. Any news? Ria stood up from her seat and walks towards Akino in such a hurry. Hi, Bushu. The Archduke just sent us a message. Apparently, a group of fallen aroused suspicion at the church. Asia, multiple thoughts began to swirl inside Issei's head, making his calm facade show a crack. Issei, Rias worriedly looked at him with furrowed brows. Hum fine. She didn't look convinced with the way he responded but dropped the subject. He took some deep breaths and his demeanor returned back to normal. As I was saying, we will split into two groups. Akino and I will lure the Fallens outside of the church, expecting them to think that we'll all take the back entrance. While the three of you, she paused for a brief moment, will go ahead inside through the front, search everywhere for the ritual site then contact me. Does everyone understand? Hi. What murderous intent? Kiba stated with his left hand resting on the hilt of his sword. There must be a lot of them, this makes me feel relieved that I'm with you guys. We're a team, after all, he smiled towards Issei but then his personality suddenly turned unpleasant. And personally, I'm not overly fond of fallens and priests. I despise them, his eyes seemingly lost too. Far away lands as he continues to glare menacingly. Issei gave him a worried glance and waited for him to calm down, then he saw Kaneko walking. Straight to the main doors. Kaneko-san, why bother hiding? They must have known we're here. Kiba and Issei immediately jumped beside her, she then kicked the doors open. Hey, hey, is it my lucky day? Three demon trash in one night. How wonderful. A creepy looking priest with white hair came out while holding a sword and a gun on the other. You know, I'm strong so once I meet one of your kind he gets this treatment. He said, gesturing a line through his neck with his thumb. Kaneko didn't waste any more time and made the first move, grabbed the large wooden table nearby, and threw it at him. The priest sliced it into two and took a step back, shielding his eyes using the back of his arm from the dust. You're one insolent midget. Kiba sprang into action and engages himself with the priest. Insolent. He was able to lead an advantage, making the priest drop the sword because of the deep cut on his shoulder. The priest readied his gun and shoot directly to Issei, he dodged the bullet at the last second and kicked the weapon and sweeps him off of his feet. Kaneko-san, now, Kaneko quickly jumps up, clasping both of her hands together and slams it down on the priest, there was a cracking sound heard and screams from the assault. A-C-K, that F asterisk C King hurts. With Rias and Akino, look who's here, people call me the fallen angel Matelt. A blonde girl that has her hair in pigtails jumped down from the branch she was sitting on and did a curtsy. Oh my, how courteous of you. Akino said with a hand on her right cheek while still smiling. My servant sensed you, you must be scared about us being on the move. Rias said calmly, perhaps, since you two are the only ones who actually stand a chance of interrupting our ritual. Oh really? You'll be surprised by the results after all this, we're not going to join them. Miltelt ignored her. Come forth, Kalawarner and Donaseek. It's obvious you intend to interfere with our plan, repent with your life. The man named Donaseek summoned a light blue light spear and used his black feathered wings. Akino. Got it, 
Bushu. Akino envelops herself in yellow light and transforms her clothes into a traditional Miko attire. She placed a barrier around them, and multiple red magic circles appeared around them. You can't get out of this one, I'm afraid. We came here to get rid of all of you, a red hue began to make an appearance on Akino's cheeks, she places a finger on her lower lip and shows a sickeningly sadistic smile. Enjoy posing. Once the ritual is over, even you won't be able to stand in her way, Warner said. Care to tell what you intend to do? Rias asked. Why would we? We're not an idiot to do that. Warner stated it like it's a fact. Then we have no other choice but to eliminate all of you. Now, Rias turned to Akino and gave her a nod. The three fallen then flew up into the air with their light spears in hand and threw it in a blink of an. The light spears were directed towards Rias, but Akino blocked it for her and sent electrical discharges. Not bad, but we'll see how long that fragile barrier can last, Donesik said as he casually lands on a thick branch. Your servants should be in for a beating by now, especially that weak brown-haired boy you got as a servant. I remembered his pathetic face when Donesik stabbed him years ago, a malicious grin appeared on Kalawarner's face as she spoke. Don't underestimate Issei, Rias said as calm as possible but her insides are in turmoil and that Kalawarner fallen still continued. Oh right, I remembered something. You bunch of high class trash depict your servants as chess pieces, right, if I'm not wrong, he's your palm. How desperate can you be to put him in the front lines? With the others, no matter how good you think he is, he doesn't stand a chance against Rainer Sama because as far as what I have seen, he's the weakest. Matelt exclaimed with her pink light spear appearing once again, the others doing the same and was ready to charge at Rias but was pushed back by a sudden wave of powerful crimson. You made fun of, you made fun of my servant. Her hair floating in the air while her fringes covered her eyes and still emitting a powerful aura. Oh my, you shouldn't have made her upset. Akino took a step back and smiled, excited at the outcome. Issei grabbed the priest's shirt and started to shake him. Oi oi, don't pass out now, where's the ritual site? The priest lifted a shaking finger and pointed towards the altar and then, passed out. Kaneko used her strength and wrecked the altar, revealing a passageway. I already contacted Bushu, she said they're on their way and that we should go on ahead. Kiba said taking out his sword from its sheath again. They made their way down and was greeted by a large group of priests, right on top with Asia chained to a glowing cross. Asia, welcome demons and my beloved Issei-kun tilde sorry to ruin our reunion but the ritual is almost over. Issei can't help but feel disgusted with the way Raymer looked at him. I see, that fallen angel's objective was to take Asia-san's sacred gear, Kiba said with worry. No, Asia might die, the light from the ritual suddenly died out. Two rings came floating down to Rainer's grasp. The twilight healing is finally mine. The priests began to attack the three. You demons. F asterisk CK off we don't have time to deal with you. Issei. Yelled at them as he threw a priest towards the others, knocking several down. Issei kun. Get Asia san, we'll back you up. Right. Issei made it up the stairs with ease and faced Rainer. You can have her, she is no longer useful. With a snap of her FNGERS, the chain around Asia came undone Issei caught her in his arms and gently shook her. Asia, wake up, say San, she said in a whisper and fainted. Give back her sacred gear. As much as I like you, unfortunately, I can't. Stop with the lie that you like me. While still holding Asia he snapped at the fallen. But it's true. Her face then turned to an innocent one. I don't lie about what I feel, Issei-kun. Issei stood up lifted Asia in a bridal carry. This isn't over yet, he said and jumped down the stairs. Rainer let him go for now and watched his back as he ran for the exit. The wielder of boosted gear laid the blonde nun down on one of the many long wooden seats in the church and held both of her hands. Asia, hang in there. You'll be free once we get out of here and we can have fun together, just like what you wanted, his eyes glistening with tears. Asia heard his voice and forced her eyes to open and spoke softly. It wasn't for long, but I'm so happy I was able to make a friend. She gave him a closed-eyed smile. There are so many more places I want to show you. Well go wherever you want, and I haven't introduced you to my friends yet, so please, hang in there. By now, 
Tears are cascading down freely, his hands clutched onto hers tightly. Why you're crying for me? She broke free from Issei's hold and used her right hand to brush away the tears. I couldn't ask for more. Thank you. Her hand went limp and fell beside her. Asia, no no number. You can't die. Issei held her once more and cried while looking up. He felt like he was being stabbed over and over, he couldn't believe he has watched someone die. Again, I am the worst. He let go of Asia and punched the ground angrily. No need to cry, Issei-kun. I'm here. Rainer appeared beside him and placed his head on her chest. Why did she have to die? She could have lived a peaceful life. Issei couldn't find the power in him to move, his eyes are beginning to become lifeless but anger. Continue to build up inside him. This is the destiny of the chosen ones, those endowed with a sacred gear. This was bound to happen. That's no destiny, he said under his breath enough for Rainer to hear every word. Partner, get a grip. Things can't end like this. What about Asia's feelings? Diedrag spoke within his mind. Asia, then something snapped inside of him as his body began to heat up. Ah, she hissed and jumped away from Issei. What's happening, Issei-kun? He didn't respond and just kept his head hanging low, red scales started to appear under his right eye. Not only on his face but also his right arm up to his neck. Issei gritted his teeth, showing the perfectly white sharp set and his eyes slowly turned black with red. Slits, you're the reason why Asia's dead. You took her sacred gear. And I will end you. He finally looked up to her, just his intense gaze made it hard for her to breath. She summoned her light spear and used it as a defense. Issei charged at her with his dragonified right hand and crushed the spear, he then clenched it into a tight fist. She didn't have any time to dodge and was sent flying, destroying the roof in the process and coughing out blood. He stood there while looking up, breathing quite heavily as the whole room's temperature rises up and steam coming out of him. Issei, he turned to the collar and was greeted by the crimson-haired president, looking frightened by his appearance, Kiba and Kaneko behind her, while Akino is nowhere to be found. He glared menacingly and was about to attack them when Akino showed up. With Rainer that seems to be conscious at the moment, the sight of Rainer made him let out a deep growl as he makes his way to her. Rias ignored the other's call for her to stop but she still ran forward and cradled him in her arms. Dismissing the heat as she whispers soothing words to him. This isn't you, come back please. She pleaded with tears forming on the corner of her eyes. The heat started to subside and the scales on him disappeared. Rias broke the contact and helped Issei on his feet. Thank you, Bushu, Rias responded with a smile and turned her gaze on the soul fallen. Nice to meet you, fallen angel Rainer. My name is Rias Gramori, by the way. She took something from her pocket, dropping it on top of Rainer's head. She took something from her pocket, dropping it on top of Rainer's head. Rainer stared, clearly shocked as three black feathers falls down on the ground. I blasted away your friends. And you made such a mess, Bushu, Akino said, placing a hand on her cheek. We'll just have someone clean it up. Gramori girl, how dare you? You don't have the right to speak, Rainer. You and your friends have done enough damage. Her hands glowed crimson, and then a ball of destruction formed. Issei, help me please. I'll do anything you say. He just stared at her and gave Rias a nod to proceed, he turned around and waited for it to be over. He felt a little bit guilty but it vanished when the thought of Asia struck him. When the light from the destruction died down, he returned his gaze back to Rias and saw her. Holding the twilight healing, let's return this to her. Rias gave the rings to Issei and let him put it back. Issei, do you know what this is? She asked him while he holding a chess piece. A bishop, yes, and a bishop's task is to support other demons in the household and I'm sure her capabilities will make her a great one. Bushu, do you mean? I will try resurrecting her as a demon. They laid her on the floor then a red Grimori seal appeared under her and glowed. I, Rias Grimori, hereby order you. Heed me, Asia Argento. Bring your soul back to this world and become my servant demon. You shall become my bishop. Asia's body also glowed red and it disappeared when the process was done. Huh, Issei didn't waste any time and pulled her into a hug. Let's go back, Asia. Onisama, what do you mean you'll take Issei? Rias doesn't seem pleased. Rias, a friend told me that he went berserk, so I wanted to have him. 
control his dragon side with the help of a former dragon king. B but, truth be told, she just didn't want to part with him. You told me that the red dragon emperor talked to you and that the seal on Issei was damaged, right? We need to help him control it before someone else gets hurt. A sudden memory came flashing through her mind. She was in this dark void. Rias Gramori the heiress to the Gramori clan and the Imauto of Lucifer. Glowing green eyes glimmers from a distance. WH who are you? I am Didre, the partner of Issei Hiodo. I came here to warn you. About Issei's other half. Do you mean his dragon side? Yes, he gave up his entire right side to become a half dragon, making his power increase exponentially. He does not have complete control over it yet so I placed a temporary seal but it was damaged by his anger and other M notions that fueled the transformation. I advise you and your peerage to exercise caution or better yet tell your brother. We are running out of time. Wait, what does this have to do with Onisama? Let's just say he helped Issei in his roughest times, farewell Rias. Gramori, her eyes snapped open and carefully looked around her surroundings. Finding herself to be in her room with little sunlight peeking from the window. Issei. Since it's Sunday, she decided to go to the Grimori household in the underworld, and then bringing us back to what they were talking about earlier with Sears X. Fine, I guess it's for the better. She said with her eyes casted down. Sears X placed a hand on her head and said, Don't worry, he'll be back before you know it. The next day, Issei almost didn't bother hiding his displeasure since he doesn't want to go but in the inside, Diedrag insisted. When will I go? Tomorrow. Someone will come for you here in the morning, and I have talked about this with Sona allowing you to miss school for as long as your training will last. Wait, how about Asia? I can't just leave her alone, the mentioned girl is sitting with Akino, a silent Kaneko who's eating, and Kiba across them. The three are silently listening to their conversation, already knowing the reason for his departure. Akino volunteered to stay with Asia, dragging Kaneko with her, so there is no need to worry. Really, Arigato Bushu, he bowed, now go home early so you can prepare your things. He did what he was told and prepared the things he will need, and called his parents, saying that he won't be home for who knows how long. Mr. and Mrs. Hiodo seems so worried but allowed him nonetheless. Issei slept somewhat comfortably, a little worried of the future and his duties as Rhea's servant. It's nice to see you again Hiodo san A woman in a maid outfit greeted him. Same here Grafia san and I beg you, just call me Issei. As you wish, the other members of the occult research club watched and looks bemused. I shouldn't be surprised, Didreg san did say that Onisama knows Issei. And it's only natural he also meets his wife and queen, Rias thought. Ah, Bushu, before I go, please promise that you'll call me when something is wrong or if I'm needed. Issei, I don't think, she started to reason but he insisted. Just promise me, he looked at her with a determined expression that she couldn't resist. I promise, but in exchange, you'll do your best in training. I am already planning on that, Bushu. Besides, I want to be the mightiest pawn. He raised his right hand to salute her. You better get going then. Rias nodded to Grafia. Good luck, Issei san. Asia tackled him in a hug which he returned. Well be waiting for you, Issei kun. Issei and Kiba did a fist bump. Kaneko showed Hima, small smile while Alkano gave him a sexy photo of herself. H huh. Just look at it whenever you miss me Tilda. She gave him a sly smile. His whole face turned red by what she said, you can even see the steam coming out of his ears. A A Arigato, A Akino San. He became a fumbling mess, while holding on to the photo with shaking hands. Rias rolled her eyes at this and pulled on his ear. Ow, 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 that hurts, Bushu, he said, rubbing on his now redder right ear. Pull yourself together, Issei. She huffed, slightly pushing him in the magic circle. John A. Minna, shortly after they have arrived inside a protected train going to the underworld. Yo, a tall man in his twenties appeared, with his black hair and golden hair. Swaying slightly as he walks towards them. What's up Azazel, fancy seeing you here. Sears X asked me for a favor, I am here to supervise your training with a former dragon king. 
Then I'll be in your care. No need for that you know, it's the least I can do since you help me. Clean up last time and besides, I want to observe your sacred gear. What the former governor general of the fallen angels and Gregory meant was about Issei helping him with his fallen angel problem, some have gone rogue in the human world. Their talk didn't last for much longer when they have reached their destination. That's where the two met up with the Lucifer, the rest of the Grimori. Members are nowhere to be seen except for his son, Malikas. When they entered the Grimori residence, several maids formed a line on both sides. Sears ex Lucifer greeted them enthusiastically. Issei, you'll be staying at a cottage in the mountains, why don't you head up there and greet Tannen? Hi, they gave him directions to where the cottage is, he made it up there by foot with his massive bag consisting of his clothes and supplies. When he finally settled in, he changed into his gray track suit and decided to find the dragon that'll help him, then he was greeted by a large western dragon that is covered in purple scales and has yellow horns in the rocky part of the mountain. The dragon looked down at him. This is the first time training one who wields Diedrag, his deep voice booms. Before we start your training, show me what you got, boy. Tannen inhales and gathers fire in his mouth and releases it, creating a large ball of fire Issei was able to evade the attack in time by rolling to the side and blocked the incoming tail with his arms in a cross motion. The great force of it pushed him down, submerging his feet on the ground. Not bad, let's raise the fire power then. He inhales once again and shoots multiple fire balls, he managed to avoid almost all of it but one was able to graze his sleeve, catching it in fire. He puts it out before it spreads further and stepped away from the former dragon king, stop dodging an attack, the adrenaline finally getting to him, making him excited in the inside. The temperature rises around him and red scales starts to appear on his body along with a dragon-like gauntlet that covers majority of his left arm that has two green jewels and ten golden spikes. Dragon Booster. It seems you have already reached its third and final form, Tannen said, swinging his clenched fist down on Issei. The latter jumped away, the fist hit the ground and created a small earthquake. I offered half of my body to tap part of this power. Boost. Issei rose both of his hand, he began to concentrate his demonic power. On the left and Diedrag's blazing inferno of scorching flames on the right. He then combines it together with both of his hands in the air, creating a massive ball of destructive power. Blazing Dragon Sphere. He threw it towards Tannen, whom initially thought can take it head on but recognize the flames, the flames that can incinerate anything. Diedrag's flames. These flames weren't the ones Issei can control. Tannen quickly flew back a great distance before the attack can hit him and fired his OWM massive ball of fire. Both attacks clashed together that generated a very destructive explosion sending both flying. Tannen manages to use his wings to fight against the air blast and flying. Debris but Issei was left unscathed. That's enough for today, Issei's mind screams, not yet, eager to continue the fight, slowly losing to his battle maniac side and with flames appearing around him. Boost. He charged at Tannen using his enhanced speed, his dragonified right hand coated in flames and demonic energy. The former dragon king waited, ready to counter, but was surprised to see a barrier between him and Issei. The barrier started to crack, as Issei thrusts further. Calm down Issei, Azazel said, using his hypnotism magic. He does calm's dome a little before completely losing consciousness. Falling to the ground, ooh, should have seen this coming. He winced at the sight below him. I could have handled him myself. I know, I just want to see him up close in that state. You can leave him. To me, Tannen just nodded his head as reply and flew away. Azazel put Issei's right arm over his shoulder and spreads his wings. Because of how fast they were going, they made it within a few seconds. He laid the red dragon emperor on a simple white bed and called a maid. To tend to him when everything else was taken care of. He called out to Diedrag as he took a sit beside the bed with his arms crossed. A past host, yes, a past host of mine is manipulating Issei. Azazel's face brightened in realization. That's right, a fragment of their consciousness is stored inside the boosted gear. To tell you the truth, Issei wasn't the first one to offer a part of his body for power. 
I forgot his name, but I do remember that he was the third. Strongest host of the boosted gear. He was blinded by the power and wanted more, then he eventually died because his body couldn't contain it. Now, he's haunting Issei to do what he couldn't, so when Issei weren't berserk last time, his emotions was used against him. Hmm, this will make it harder for us to help him then, do you have any idea how to stop the haunting host? I believe all we can do is to help him grow, the rest is up to him, since he is the only one that can fight him in his mind. I see, Azazel stood up and thanked Diedre for the information. The next day, Azazel came back to Issei's temporary place of stay within. Ice cold bucket of water. Rise and shine, Issei. The cold sensation immediately woke him from. His slumber. WW what the he hell. He wrapped his arms around himself with his teeth chattering as he. Yelled at the governor. Ha 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 you should have seen the look on your face. Azazel threw his head back and laughs hysterically. Issei envelops himself in flames to warm up as he jumps out of the bed. Ha ha, laugh all you want. What are you even doing here so early in? The morning. By now the governor ceased his laughing. Okay. First of all, it's already 10 in the morning. Second, I'm here to tell. You your schedule then we'll head out to meet with Tannen. Just give me a few minutes. Issei left the room to go to the bathroom with his clothes, after his business there, he went to the small kitchen and toasted Somni bread. After waiting for what seems like hours to Azazel, Issei came back to his room. Now that I have your attention, your training will last for a minimum of 20 days or more, depending on your progress. You will work on your reflexes and the use of your senses, since you have perfect vision you will be using a blindfold. Then Tannen will help you be comfortable with your other half, We'll also work on the use of Diedrake's original powers, your balance breaker and your flames. Issei's mouth hung open and his eyes widen in shock. You, that's a lot of work. He complained. Don't complain just because you miss your precious Rias and friends, I know that you know that you need this, Azazel did an air quote on the mention of the president and the others while wearing a smug grin. Tisk, okay okay, you're right. I do need this so let's go already. They left the cottage and went to one of the mountains of the Grimori. Territory, you're late, the dragon said, smoke puffs out of his snout. Go say, it won't happen again, Issei bowed respectfully. Azazel then gave Issei a black blindfold then they started his training. Because of yesterday's incident, Tannen didn't show any mercy and ruthlessly trained him for the rest of the day with little amount of time for breaks. Hyodo Issei has been training for a week now, while Rias and her peerage went on with their days as they continue to wait for him. Asia manages to take in what devils do and other necessary information that she needs to know. This particular morning, Kaneko and Asia walked towards the old school, building with Kiba walking behind them. Looks like you're all here, President Rias said, motioning for them to take a seat. Milady, should I talk to them? Grafia asked. She shook her head no and straightened up. The truth is, she started to say but she stopped when a magic circle appeared and flames erupted then came a tall blonde man who seems to be in his early twenties, wearing a white dress shirt, burgundy blazer with gold embroidery with matching pants and black dress shoes. I haven't been to the human realm in a while. Rias, my love, I have come for you. This is Riser Phoenix Sama, a pure-blooded, upper-class demon. He is, also the fiancé of the Grimori family's heiress apparent, this is to say, that he is engaged to Lady Rias, Grafia introduced. Kiba, Asia and Kaneko moved away from the couch to give way to Riser. While Akino served him tea. My, Rias's queen prepares quite delicious tea. Thank you for the compliment, Akino slightly bowed and stood with. The others, come sit and drink with me, Rias. She was about to Delini when she thought of this as an opportunity to have a talk with him and not to appear rude. She sat with him, making a fair distance between them much to Riser's dismay. Riser, haven't I told you before, I'm not going to marry you. But Rias, I thought your family was with its back to the wall, so you're in no position to be this selfish. I don't intend to bring my family down, she shot back, ready to stand. But a hand wrapped around her waist stopped her. 
The entire demon world struggles to preserve the lineages of pure-blooded demons, our fathers arranged this marriage for the common good, his right arm still around her while the other caresses her exposed thigh, cut it out, Rias successfully pushed him away, this is the last time, I'm not going to say again, I'm not going to marry, you, my father, elder brother, and other family members are all rushing, too much, I am going to marry someone I want to be with, you know, I am the face of the Phoenix family and I cannot have you, sully my honor, he forcefully grabbed her chin, his thumb gently, strokes the side of her lips, TLL take you back to the underworld, even IFIT means burning all your servants to death, his eyes glowed a golden color, Rius's eyes were the same, except it was red, please calm down, milady, riser sama, as I am here on Sirzex sama's orders, I do not intend to stand idly by, riser let her go and took a step back, when it's you, the mightiest queen, saying that, even I can't help but be scared, Sirzex Sama predicted this might happen, as such, I have been charged to carry out a last resort measure if no agreement is reached. What do you mean Grafia? Milady, if you insist on your position, you can settle the issue with Riser Sama through a raiding game. Rius's peerage tensed at the mention of the raiding game, a game that resembles chess, where upper-class demons fight using their servants, their powers are likened to chess pieces. I've played the game many times and won several times as well. You're not even a qualified player, let alone have any experience, he chuckled. Rius, just to be sure, are these all your servants? What if they are? She lied through her teeth. Riser didn't seem to notice, he snapped his fingers, summoning his servants. I have fifteen, a full set of pieces. Doesn't this tell you something? If we're to have a raiding game, you will lose. He called his queen and decided that it was a good time to make out with her, making Rius more disgusted and wanted to run out the door. She glared at him, determined to break off the engagement. He cut short their intimate moment together and faced Rius again. I don't think anyone in your peerage stands a chance against my queen. Or anyone in particular, he was feeling smug with his comment. Rius and the others clearly felt offended and made their way beside the former hell-bent on proving the Phoenix wrong, for mocking their king and themselves. All right, Rius sensed their strength of will and agreed, I swear ill blast. You away, TD like to see you try, looking forward to it. Rius, my love, he had the nerve to wink and send her a flying kiss before leaving with his peerage. Given the differences between the two groups, Rius was offered 10 days to prepare for the raiding game. In terms of number, they're distinctly outshined, they immediately left the next day, staying at the Grimori household in the underworld, where's Issei-san staying, Asia asked the president, I am not sure, even though I wanted to see him as well, we are forbidden, words from Onisama, hearing those words saddened the group, to take their mind off of the topic, Rius decided to start training, when it was lunch time, all of them sat around the table with delicious food in front of them that was prepared by Akino in Asia. Itadakimasu. As they quietly ate their food, Asia broke the silence. B. Bushu. Yes, Asia, are we going to tell Issei-san? They all looked up from their food and turned to their president. There was a moment of silence before she answered. I am afraid we can't do that, she said with a heavy sigh. They all looked confused. Given Issei's situation, he is going through something we are not allowed to interfere with, an internal battle only meant for him. After their training for the day, Rias and her peerage retired for the night. And only two figures are still awake. In a large room, there sat a crimson-haired upper-class demon with his wife besides him on their bed. Both in their nightwear, her chances are pretty much non-existent. He is part of a family that shares their name with a sacred beast, his quick regeneration ability plays a big part in his battle against Rias. He stated, you knew that but you still. She trailed off. Imerly gave her a choice, it's her decision, he booped her nose then. Kissed her right cheek, don't worry too much, you Andy both know that little Rhea won't go down. Without a fight, she silently nodded her head and tugged on his sleeves. Let's sleep, she said. As you wish my queen. Rias and her peerage quietly sat together as they mentally prepare. 
themselves for the upcoming rating game tonight. Then they heard a familiar voice. Excuse us, the student council president said with the vice president. Behind her, good evening, Sona. Asia gave Rias a questioning look. Since the rating games are broadcasted to members of both families, they are responsible for it. I volunteered for the task, it is your first rating game after all. Then it'll show you a fight that won't insult our rivalry, right after the Crimson Haired said that a magic circle suddenly appeared. Everyone, are you prepared? Grafia asked, yes, anytime. Grafia told them that if the battle is about to start, they will be teleported to the battlefield, an alternate space created just for the game. I will be going back to the student council room to manage the broadcast. I wish you the best of luck, Rias. Thank you, but make the broadcast fair, okay? Of course, but I do not expect an even match against him, so be careful. Sona said as they started walking towards the door. Rias nodded and thanked her again. Another magic circle appeared, indicating that it is time for the game. To start, they all went in. When the light died down, it looked like the teleportation fail but they actually made it to an alternate space that is a replica. I am Grafia, servant of the Grimori family, appointed judge between the Grimori and Phoenix families. Taking Lady Rias and Riser Samas. Opinions, a school milady attends in the human world is chosen as the battlefield. Her voice echoes everywhere. When you look outside, the sky looks different. Lady Rias's main base is the occult research club room in the old school building, while Riser Sama's main base is the principal's office in the new school house. Thus, pawns can be promoted when they manage to invade the enemy's base. There was a pause for a moment before her last announcement. The game begins now. Rias each gave Tame a transceiver for easy communication and began briefing them with the plan. I expect a few of their nimble rooks and knights to be placed around. This clubhouse, she said, pointing to a particular club on the school map. We'll talk the gym first, which is near both the old and new schoolhouse. It's pretty close to our base and would help keep the enemies in check. First, we need to secure the defensive line. They all nodded in understanding. Yudo, Kaneko, go set up traps in the forest. Akino, once the traps are set, use illusionary magic on the forest and sky above it. Asia, your recovery and support, so stand by with me here. Roger, Akino and Kaneko summoned their familiars and did what they were said to do. Once they were done, they called Rias and started their game. Plan, Lady Rias has begun her move, Graphia said. Kaneko, I know that once you enter the gym, you won't be able to avoid a battle, but I just want you to immobilize them then leave. Understood, Kaneko responded. Yudo, are you ready? After you finish off with the enemies that falls into our trap, I want you to save your energy as much as possible. Got it. And lastly, she called for Akino. Akino, please be ready and wait for the right moment. Yes, Bushu. Now, commence operation. Kaneko sneaked into the gym but was immediately spotted. I know you're here Grimori servant, there is no use hiding, I am. Shwelin, a rook, a girl with bun on her head said, followed by a blue. Haired holding a stick, I am Mira, a pawn. A pair of twins that are pawns named, Nell and Two, came last. Riser's rook named Shwelin challenged her. Fine by me, Kaneko got into a fighting stance, while the others stand by. Three pawns and a knight of Riser are attempting infiltration, there. Surroundings began to get foggy. Traps from every direction starts to fire at them. Traps. This is child's play. What they didn't know is that they are being lured somewhere else. We're here. A pawn said. Then the illusion started to fade. You can't get out of here anymore. You're inside a barrier that our queen created. Kiba stated, slowly walking towards them with a sword in hand. Damn it. We didn't notice. No matter. He can't possibly take us all on his own. And boy, that's where they're wrong. Back to Kaneko and her side of the battle, Shwelin attacks her with either. Her hands or feet coated with flames Kaneko manages to avoid getting critical hits but was still left with. Scrapes. A kick caught her off guard and tore a part of her uniform, this time. She's done playing on the defense and sends out attacks of her own. She continuously sends barges of punches, not letting Shwelin have any time to retaliate. 
She stopped for a moment before swinging a powerful roundhouse kick, sending Shuelin crashing to the wall. Shuelin, the rook was barely conscious. We'll rip you apart. The twins raises their chainsaws in the air. She dodges every strike coming her way, swiftly sweeping Nell off of her feet. The other twin was almost shredded by Nell's chainsaw making her stumble. Kaneko then strikes the pressure points on their body, preventing them from moving. The only one left is the blue-haired pawn, who's glaring at her. She thrusts her stick multiple times but was unable to land a hit. Let's get this over with. Kaneko kicks the weapon away and delivered a solid punch, making the girl fall on her knees. Kaneko contacted the president and ran out the door, when she was a few meters away from the gym, it exploded. Credits to Akino, who is in her Miko attire, floating high in the air. Riser Sama's three pawns and a rook, retired. Grafia said, they are still outnumbered, even with Rias's bold decision to blow up a strategic location. Kaneko then quickly made her way to the track field, where her and Kiba are to meet, while Akino hides somewhere nearby. Speaking of the blonde knight, he successfully defeated his opponents. Riser Sama's three pawns and a knight, retired. Rias smiled in satisfaction, all going according to her plan. The two took a rest first inside a storage room before going out again to continue the plan. Just as what the president predicted, Riser's remaining pieces came out to deal with them, except for the queen. Two palm, two bishop, a knight and a rook faces Kaneko and Kiba. TM Riser Sama's knight, Carlemagne. And I am Rias Sama's knight, Kiba Yuto. I look forward to crossing swords with another knight, he bowed gracefully. Well said Rias Sama's knight. Both lunged for each other. Just when I thought I found a cutie, it turns out he's another sword. Freak. A blonde girl with blue eyes, that looks like Riser thought, as she watches the two knights fight. Riser's rook was about to engage herself with Kaneko when both of them were blown away. Kaneko, what happened to her, Yuto? Rias began to panic when she heard the explosion. Riser's queen made an appearance, was what he said as he kicks. Carla main away, take. The bomb queen said. Kiba rushed to Kaneko's side. I wish I could have been of more help to the president, she then disappeared along with the other rook, Lady Rias and Riser Sama's rook, retired. Kiba felt the anger rising in him. Kiba Kun, he looked up and saw Akino. TL deal with her, so hurry along. I will avenge Kaneko Chan with all my might, she said while emitting a powerful aura. Kiba nodded his head and left to deal with the others. I wanted to fight you someday, Priestess of Thunder. Oh my. I am quite honored, Bomb Queen San. With the abrupt appearance of Riser's queen, there was a change in Rius's plan. It's time, Asia, she plans to launch a surprise attack on Riser's main base. They sneaked inside the new schoolhouse and was greeted by Riser, both deciding to take their battle on the roof. It's too early to go for a direct attack. A virgin like you should nt. Underestimate my experience, Rius. How vulgar. Let me have some fun, I want to enjoy this foreplay. He sends a fire-based attack in a shape of a spear, Rias defends herself. By countering it with her power of destruction, they both continued exchanging blows with no clear winner. Akino could have defeated the Bomb Queen if it weren't for the Phoenix. Tears the latter used, making her recover completely. You are indeed formidable, Priestess of Thunder but it's game over, she silently laughs and made her way to her king. Lady Rias's queen, retired. Akino. Focus on our fight, Rias. Riser send her another attack that she was not able to dodge. Asia heals. Her injuries and even with them gone, she still felt horrible. Kiba readies himself for his upcoming and final attack, his whole demeanor seems to change again. I am one of Rias Sama's subordinate, we came here for her sake. Sword. Birth. With all of his remaining power, he gave everything he had to this one attack, he strikes his sword downwards, creating numerous demon swords, each with its own attributes and properties, emerging from the surface. Within 20 meter radius, they were skewered, except for Ravel, Riser's Imouto who managed to fly away. Riser Sama's two pawns, a bishop and a knight, retired. Kiba smiled victoriously as he fell down on the ground with no strength left in him and passes out. 
Lady Rias's knight, retired. It's down to two against one, not counting Ravel, since she doesn't want to fight. Rias is clearly in a disadvantage, if it weren't for those phoenix tears. The tide of the battle would have gone in their favor. Ready to give up, Rias. Giving up is not an option. Don't be ridiculous. You and your pitiful bishop are the only one. Remaining. TLL handle them myself, Riser Sama. No need, ill deal with them. I bet she's exhausted and drained of all. Magic. He attacks them with his hell fire. At first, Rias thought the attack was aimed at her but much to her surprise when it passes her. Asia. It was too late for her to make a barrier or to even counter it in. Taiman was left no other choice but to use her body to cover Asia. Bushu. It's over. Just when Riser said that, Grafia announces his win. Azazel sat on the couch with a cigarette in hand, he's sitting there like he owns the place, not like Issei minds. Issei, your training just ended yesterday, seems like you're very eager. To go back, Azazel showed his signature smirk. Hee hee, well I do miss them you know and I've been gone for far too long. Already, Issei awkwardly rubs his nape. Azazel thought his training will exceed, till a month but Issei finished for exactly 20 days and tonight will be the time for him to face his battle. For the rest of the day, all he did was relax with Tannen. They talked about what they wanted for the future and get to know each other better. Thanks for everything, Tannen sensei. No problem, kid. That strict dragon isn't so bad and it was fun while it lasted, Issei. Thought to himself. Now, he is lying on his bed with magic restraints. Remember, that time runs differently there so be fast about it. Azazel said with the most serious face he could muster. I understand, thank you Azazel and Grafia San. He gave them one last grin before closing his eyes. When he opened his eyes, he is in the occult research club room. With everyone there with him. The president, Akino, Kiba, Kaneko and Asia are all present and there. Our food placed on the table. Welcome back, Issei. They all said at the same time. Asia and Akino were the first one to go to him, giving him a hug. Followed by Kaneko and Kiba. While their club president stood at the side lines with a smile. They celebrated Issei's return and then he eventually forgot what he's supposed to do and that nothing is real here. He ate and laughed with them telling them what he did with a former Dragon King and Azazel during his training. The people around him suddenly got quiet. Is everyone all right? He asked them but none responded. Pain starts to shoot in his head, his right hand shaking, making him drop. His plate. A-H-H. -H. He holds his head and closes his eyes. Everything fades around him, he didn't notice it at first and then forces himself to open his eyes to look around. Empty and white. These were the only words he said to describe the place. His heart pounds heavily, eyes changing to black with red slits, his teeth sharpens and scales appears on him. He felt like someone is forcing him to transform into his dragon side. I've been waiting for this for a very long time, Hyodo Issei, a man. With short black hair, clad in a tattered black cloak said. Who the hell are you? How rude. Didn't they tell you to respect those older than you? And I'm sure you have an idea to who I am. Issei scowled at him. Let me ask you something. Why did you sacrifice half of your body? Hmm. Issei didn't answer. Tell me, is it because you've realized you don't have enough power? For what? Tell me Hyodo. He still kept his mouth shut. Are you perhaps afraid of dying? Or seeing your loved ones die in front of you? Or do you just want nothing but to dominate? The last one was what the guy obviously wanted. Several images starts to flash around Issei. A friend of his back at the countryside was slaughtered because of him, he wasn't able to do anything but tremble in fear. He fell on his knees, eyes casted down and all he can see is red. Then the image of his grandparents almost dying because of fallen. Angels struck him, it was his breaking point, it made him realize that he's so weak. Vulnerable and useless, he made the decision to sacrifice half of his body to Deidre because he doesn't want to feel those again. H almost lost them, Issei's whole body shakes in terror. That's right, you almost did. Do you want that to happen again? No, right. The man walks closer to Issei and extends his right hand. Come, I will help you, I can offer you more power than what you have. Now, 
No one will die if you join me, your family, friends, and everyone else you care about, all of them will be safe and sound. This is a trap, yet I want to accept. If I have more power, Bushu and the others will be safe, I can protect them. Think about it, Hyodo. No, if I accept then the efforts of those who helped me get this far will be for nothing. Are you gonna accept or what? I'm getting tired here. No, he muttered. Pardon, I said. No, he slapped the outstretched hand away and quickly rose to his feet. Then he'll just have to take over you by force. The past host's body starts to change. He threw his cloak away and showed his dragonified upper body. Protruding black horns appears along with a pair of dragon wings and his eyes turned all bloody red. Since Issei was already dragonified, all he did was call forth for his boosted gear. Boost. Azazel told me that he's actually weak despite the things I'm seeing. Considering this is my mind, I can do what I want. Hyodo. The unnamed host charges at him. He dodged it with his godlike speed, making his opponent look like in slow motion. Boost. He continued to dodge every attack thrown at him while boosting. This is the end. Explosion. He releases the stored power. He swiftly went near and concentrates his demonic and draconic energy. And then, fires a huge beam. It was too late for the guy to even turn around, he was completely annihilated. Good thing that's over with and I believe this took too much of my time. He laid down on the floor and took a breather and closed his eyes once. Again, it felt like an hour to him when he was able to open his eyes, he was back in his room and he thought Azazel and Graphia will be there but he's alone. Where are they? It was still a bit hard walking so he stretched first before going outside. His room. When he finally got out, he went to the kitchen to make something to munch on. He sat down on a stool and started eating, in the middle of his meal he heard voices outside. Where is Sirzex? A voice he recognized asked, he got curious and walked a bit and saw two figures. Azazel and Graphia San, Sirzex Sama is with the Fenex family. When is he coming back? I need to talk to him. He knows I don't like. Waiting and Issei is going to wake up soon. He said he will be back tonight, he wants to talk to Zeodicus Sama about. Lady Rius's engagement party, well, he should have. What Issei accidentally dropped his sandwich. The two cautiously looked around for the cause of the noise in SAVW. Issei walking towards them, the food has been forgotten. Poor sandwich. See, Issei, glad you're awake. He just looked at them with hardened gaze. I would like to know something. He stopped for a moment, repeatedly. Clenching and unclenching his fists. Who is she getting married to? Riser Fenex. To that chicken bastard. Does she even love him? Azazel almost laughed out loud when he heard the given name, while Graphia maintained a neutral face, but if you take a closer look, you can. See the end of her lips twitch. When did she get engaged? Is she here? Why didn't she call for me? She promised. Can someone please tell me that this is just all a freaking dream? Issei, calm down and please, one question at a time, the governor's face turned stern. He did what he was told and took deep breaths. Good, now why don't we talk inside? Graphia and I will help you digest everything in. Wait what? Issei's mouth agape with incredulity. You heard Graphia, they fought Riser in a raiding game and lost. Is that why I couldn't find you guys the other day? Graphia nodded. They told him everything that happened while he was training. This time, Issei managed to suppress his anger. When is the engagement party again? Tomorrow. Are we thinking what you're thinking? Azazel asked with a sly grin. You're going to crash the party, are you not? Ah, how cute. You guys do know me. While Azazel laughed, Graphia heaved a sigh. Sirzex Sama actually want me to give a message. He said, if you want to take my sister back, raid the place. Exact words from him. Really, I didn't expect that. I'm off then. Issei gave them a peace sign and was about to go. Wait, Azazel called out to him. Where are you even going? I am going to FND myself a suit for tomorrow. I gotta look cool for her. Am I right? Let me help you with that, Graphia offered. Is it really okay? I don't want to be a bother. It's my pleasure. Now we must go. She pulled Issei to a magic circle and just left Azazel there, still sitting on the couch. Seriously. He yelled out to no one and soon followed. 
It didn't take them a long time to find Issei something that fits him. Thanks for everything, Graphia san He bowed. The mighty queen said it was nothing and left to check on other things. Azazel also left after giving Issei a tip on how to defeat an immortal bird. It's supposed to be an engagement party, but this looks more like a wedding dress. Rias huffs in frustration while looking at herself in the mirror. You're exactly right, her fiancé appeared. Riser sama you can't. This area is off limits to men. The maids tries to reason that he's not allowed there but he still continued walking towards Rias. You maids shouldn't be so rigid, I just want to see my bride, who is the star of the night. I am not the bride just yet. What is up with this dress? It's perfect, it'll show everyone the bonding between the Grimori and Fenex households. Riser placed an arm around her shoulder and pulls her closer. His hot breath hovers near her left ear. Don't worry your dress for the actual wedding will be on a whole different level. It will be the most gorgeous dress, he finally pulled away and left, one letting Rias sigh in relief in the inside. As expected of someone from such a pretentious household, she took one final look at the mirror before also leaving the room with the maids. Right behind her, Rias's attendants are all wearing a formal attire, Akino is wearing a traditional kimono, Kaneko in a pink A-line dress while Asia in a blue cocktail dress and Kiba is wearing a black tux. Then the student council president approaches them. President Sona, Kiba greeted, the result aside, the match was quite impressive. And clearly above, everyone's expectations, thank you for the compliment but no need to be so considerate. We, don't believe it's over yet, Akino gave Sona a smile then turned to the others who have the same knowing smile. They clearly know that something entertaining is going to happen. Their attention was redirected to Riser Fenex who've just arrived. Famed nobles of the demon world. The Fenex family is honored. By your attendance tonight, we invited you all to share the historic moment in which I, Riser Fenex, and the heiress apparent of the Grimori family, Rias Grimori, formally announce our intent to marry one another. Without further ado, let me introduce my empress, Rias Grimori. There was a bright Simpson magic circle that materialized beside Riser. The crimson haired beauty appeared with a sad gleam in her blue green eyes and a fake smile. The huge doors to the banquet hall unexpectedly burst open, revealing the new W. Comer named Hyodo Issei. Sporting a black dress shirt with its top button undone, a fine silver gray suit jacket, vest and matching pants, and his black combat boots. Looking so sharp and high class. I am not late, am I? He just casually walks in with his hands in his pocket. How dare you break in? Seize him, Riser exclaimed in anger. The guests of the party moved away as guard starts to surround Issei. One by one, ladies, why don't we join in? Kiba summoned his sword and charges ahead, along with Kaneko's brute force, Asia's use of magic and Akino's lightning, successfully taking down every guard. You're finally here, Issei. What took you so long? You're late, Issei Senpei. Kaneko said, Gomen, I really thought I was on time, he apologized. More guards flooded the room. Issei kun, let us handle these guys. Go Issei san. Issei became slightly teary eyed because of the four people he calls. Friends. Thank you, everyone. The guards attention turned to them, leaving Issei free. What the hell is going on? This is a little entertainment I prepared. Riser Kuhn, the former heir to the Grimori clan, the Satan Lucifer and leader of the four great Satans spoke. Sirzex Sama, what do you mean by entertain? Riser halted when Sirzex rose his hand. The rating game was very interesting to watch, however, against my sister who was inexperienced and had half the pieces, it was a bit. He trailed off. You have complaints about the fight? Not at all, the rating game itself would become meaningless if I did. Not to mention, the circumstances involved, my old family would be dishonored. Oni-sama, Sirzex looked at his emo Udo. I wanted something flashy for my little sister's engagement party. I wanted to see for myself the power of a dragon, so I had Graphia make arrangements. Ah, I see, dragon versus phoenix, wielders of two legendary powers squaring off would make the party exciting, wouldn't it? The Satan Lucifer turned to the boosted gear wielder. 
Would you like to show me and the high class nobles your power? Issei. Don't. Rias pleads but Issei only gave her a reassuring smile. You'll be my last flame before I settle down as a married man, dragon. Boy. The two of them went to the battlefield, a floating arena. I believe, I haven't formally introduced myself. I am Hyodo Issei, Rias. Gramori Sama's pawn, and I'm sure you know who I am, Riser said arrogantly. Before we start, what do you want as a reward for winning, Issei? Sirzex asked, his face popping up using a holographic image. Sirzex Sama, no need to reward a mere low class demon. But he is a demon, nonetheless. So what do you desire, nobility? Beautiful women, you may choose anything, the only thing he wants is the president. I want Rias Gramori Sama, give her back. The mentioned girl, looked at him with an indescribable expression and multiple thoughts swirling inside her head. Then, begin, Issei summoned forth his sacred gear. I shall end your worthless existence. I can't let you do that, I told her I will be the strongest pawn and I have no intentions of going back on my word. The two green jewels of the boosted gear starts to shine as he lifts his left arm in the air, Welsh dragon balance breaker, red dragon armor with green jewels covers his entire body and has retractable dragon wings, balance breaker, boosted gear scale mail, a forbidden move, the spectators were so surprised, Issei's speed and strength doubles, he lunged forward, propelling himself using his wings and punched, riser across the jaw, damned, annoying brat, Riser rose to his feet and uses his flames for flight Issei boosted a couple of times before concentrating his demonic energy. Then fires it at Riser, who barely had any time to evade it. Riser comes flying to strike at Issei, he just lets him, the punch didn't even make a dent in his armor. Riser once again flies toward Issei with his whole body covered in his hellfire and swings a punch. Issei just stayed still, following the punch is a kick then Riser lands a few consecutive blows, this time Issei staggers a little, this is our clan's gallant hellfire of the phoenix. Take it and incinerate. A large phoenix of hellfire manifested and collided with Issei. When the smoke cleared, Issei used Diedrake's flames as a barrier. What? Issei is suddenly engulfed in red light, he then appears behind Riser and overwhelms him. When Riser tries to retaliate with an attack of his own, Issei suddenly disappeared and then kicks him from another side. Riser just keeps on regenerating every time Issei hits him. Is that all you've got? I am immortal. Riser laughs like an idiot. Oh that's right, I forgot you can regenerate. Issei said nonchalantly. Everyone's sweat dropped at his response except for Riser who took this as an insult. Is Issei-san always like this? Sona turned to Issei's fellow peerage. Members, he can be an idiot sometimes, Kaneko replied. Agreed. The rest said simultaneously. Issei, what are you planning to do? Rias thought. The spectators were once again surprised when Riser suddenly howled in. Agonizing pain. You bastard. What the f asterisk ck did you do? Riser screamed while his precious face burns. Being drenched in holy water stopped his regeneration ability and caused him a lot of damage. Bushu. Please give me permission to use promotion. Promotion. Bishop. Mode change. Welsh blaster bishop. Boost. 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 Two cannons forms at Issei's back. Don't you understand that this marriage is important to the future of the demon race? A kid like you who doesn't know anything shouldn't interfere. I don't care about that complicated stuff I you not only mocked my comrades but you also harassed the president. These are enough reasons for me to beat you up. Issei applies the enormous amount of magical energy to the two cannons. Dragon Blaster. Riser thought he was going to die, but Sirzex grabbed him by the collar and teleported away from the battlefield. The attack was capable of killing Riser, and it briefly warped space time. The match is over. Sirzex announced, he instantly smiled when he saw his Imaudo going to the Red Dragon Emperor. Issei. He turned around and saw their presider, he immediately removed his armor. She tackled him into an embrace, they're so close that Issei could smell. The sweet fragrance wafting around her. You're not leaving again, right? Because I won't let you, she said then. Buries her face on Issei's chest. Don't worry, Bushu, I won't leave even if there comes a time that you will want me to. 
He returned the affection, glad that everything is back to normal. They broke apart when the other members of the occult research club joined them, including Sona and Tsubaki. Isekun, why don't you escort the president back? Kiba said, holding onto the reins of a griffin. Whoa, can you? Rias asked with a blush adorning her cheeks. Issei playfully bowed, as you wish, milady. He helped her settle on the saddle and soon followed. We'll be waiting in the cub room. Then they took off. In the midst of their flight, Rias placed a hand on Issei's cheek. You're an idiot, you made me worry so much. I really thought you weren't going to come with the one you love not with someone your family decided for you. This time it may have been cancelled, but another engagement. Proposal can come in at any time, she looked down, eyes are starting to tear up. Issei held the reins with one of his hands, he then wrapped an arm around her waist and pulled her closer. I'll come save you, no matter how many times. I am Rias Grimori's pawn, after all, he rested his forehead gently against hers and closed his eyes. Thank you, Issei, his heart flutters by her soft voice. Before he can withdraw, he was pulled into a kiss. Her warm lips on his. He hardly had time to react properly. It was soft, full of passion, comforting in its own ways. His heart began to pound heavily every passing second and face slightly heating up. The moment she thought of giving him a kiss, she expected fireworks. And the endless fluttering in her chest but it was so much more. It was like the world around them ceased to exist. Issei pulled away and took in the heavenly sight before him. There is no word spoken after, just the presence of the other is enough. For the both of them. That's the end of the part 2 check out the author link in description.